As Union Army General William Takumish Sherman is attributed to saying, War is hell. And while that's not exactly what he said, the sentiment rings true regardless. The wars the last hundred or so years have been defined purely by their brutality, with World War II being the bloodiest conflict in human history, and the various proxy wars in the latter half of the 20th century being devastating across the world in their own right. But there's one that doesn't get talked about enough. World War I. Originally regarded as the Great War due to being fought in different theaters in all parts of the world, it was the first time the nations of Europe experienced a war in a way where everyone was on equal footing and couldn't just roll over the other side. War had been seen as a largely symbolic thing in Europe, where you go out gloriously defeat an easily conquerable foe, and then be home by the weekend. Siege weaponry at the level it was employed during the First World War, being as readily available as it was, was a new development that ground the whole thing to a halt. To put it in significantly nerdier terms, it's like Warhammer Fantasies factions all being based on late Middle Ages to Renaissance era war tactics of siege, melee, and pike and shot with a bit of magic thrown in, suddenly jumping forward to every faction suddenly having technology comparable to the Skaven. We're talking Gatling guns, flamethrowers, chemical weapons, heavy artillery, and the like. Regardless, it was incredibly fucked up, which makes it a surprisingly good backdrop for horror. Amnesia the Bunker was a suitably terrifying experience of avoiding monsters in trench bunkers, and Forgive Me Father 2 uses its player character's background as a veteran of the conflict to inform its cosmic horror trappings. Which brings us to the topic of this week's video, Conscript. If you saw the Next Fest video I put out a few months back, Conscript was the game I was the most intrigued by because of both its setting, it being a solo project by Australian game developer Jordan Mochi, and because the short board is by far the most viewed video on my channel, so there's an interest in it. Between all of those, and both covering Still Wakes to Deep and Resident Evil the original has been a bit of a horror mood this week still, until we get to more boom shoots worth talking about. So let's get into the nitty gritty of what is most likely the scariest game of 2024, Conscript. Conscript takes place during the Battle of Verdun. It was the longest battle in the First World War, stretching from February 21st to December 18th of 1916. Nearly 10 months of continuous back and forth fighting over the strategically important city of Verdun. You play as Andre, a French recruit making their first steps into the conflict. After getting through the initial fighting in the trenches, Andre finds that his older brother Pierre has gone missing in the ensuing confusion. Andre's mission then becomes to retreat south to safer fortifications, find his brother, and survive this hellish conflict. The main story is structured into six chapters, taking you all over the trenches and front lines of the Battle of Verdun. This shows you the different aspects of the war in the different sections of the front, but more importantly, it gives you an incredibly bleak look into what the war was like and what war, to an extent, still is. The trenches are dark, wet, and moody. The sounds of shelling can be heard in the distance, and there are scripted sequences where you need to avoid getting shelled yourself. And the goddamn rats. I fear no man, but that thing, it scares me. That bit of fear and paranoia aside, everything about Conscript makes it so that World War I fits perfectly into the trappings of a survival horror game, be it the scared comrades, scarce resources, and scary enemies. And that's something that I deeply appreciate about it. There's no supernatural twist, despite this setting and game being the perfect examples of such for mining. And in the case of the enemies, this is done in one of the most effective ways imaginable, through dehumanization. For those not in the know, dehumanization is, in the simplest of terms, the practice of removing human qualities to make the target in question less human. It's a key facet of military training and the German soldiers in conscript get hit hard with it, being rendered as inhuman killing machines through the use of their trench helmets and gas masks to create inhuman beings that are up there with some of the more terrifying video game creatures you can think of. This ties into one of the most effective jump scares in the game, but I'm not going to show you what it is, so you can linger on it in paranoia. There's also a lot to show that the trenches of Verdun are lived in place as well. The sleeping quarters and mess halls are filled with the remnants of chess games and meals in progress, messy beds that were just leapt out of, and French propaganda plastered all over the walls and even throughout the various trenches. When you go into the trenches themselves after the initial transition between the first two chapters, you find that it's darker because of the change in time, the rain is set in, and there are German soldiers everywhere. It leans into the whole behind enemy lines field that a lot of war stories go for, as well as enemies not doing the standard the body disappears after death thing that most video games do. They stay all the time, limp and lifeless, 
a monument to your sin for having been forced to take another man's life for a cause you may or may not believe in. And that level of dread, that terror, is palpable because it has happened historically. We've had veterans of these conflicts share their stories and talk about how fucked it was, and that only makes conscripts scarier. But that's enough about the general tone, use of terror, and the use of setting. Now it's time for the gameplay. As shown in the footage, it is a survival horror game in the style of Resident Evil, specifically the original. You go through the various trenches and battlefields, finding specific keys to unlock specific doors or finding specific items to get around specific obstacles. And since this is all war themed, they're all themed in a way that makes sense. Like the black houses needing a black house key, you need a pigeon coop key to get into the pigeon coop, the main support trench needs a support trench key, and so on. And this ends up making the battlefield an enemy in and of itself because you gotta do all of this while also getting the shit shelled out of you, German soldiers wanting to kill your ass, and eventually the effects of chemical weapons and rats setting in. Oh, 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 you thought I forgot about those? Well, as time goes on and those bodies start to pile up, rats start getting more and more prevalent. They're the toughest enemies in the game, weirdly enough, so much so that the dev had to nerf them. And they still scare me in their nerfed state. And then there's the mustard gas, when you're exposed to it for long enough, cuts your HP in half. You can't fix this with a disinfectant bandage, but seeing as how gas masks weren't as widespread and the disinfectant bandages present as yellow, I'm just gonna move on. In a more direct threat sense, you got the litany of German soldiers to contend with. From standard infantrymen and riflemen to gas mask wearing trench raiders and heavily armored knights, the German forces are fast, strong, and numerous. And of course, this can drain your resources if you choose to fight every single German you come across. This means that it might be beneficial to just hide or straight up run when you can. And it works out great for saving ammo and med kits. But there are times when you need to fight, like when you're doing the trench sequence at the beginning, but those had mounted machine guns, so it was fine. There are five permanent weapons, those being a knife, a semi-automatic pistol, a bolt-action long rifle, and a shotgun. These can kill enemies with as few as three or four shots that are well-placed, but they don't have a lot of ammo, which is where the crafting system comes in handy. Yes, Conscript has crafting, and you can use it to mix and match various gunpowders, chemical fluids, bandages, along with other stuff, to make ammo, med kits, bandages for disinfecting purposes, and more. These can be supplied to you by this nice gas mask wearing comrade who pops up in the safe rooms and serves the purpose of being like the merchant in Resident Evil 4. But instead of looted Spanish treasures, he accepts payment in the form of cigarettes. As to whether or not he smokes them afterwards is up in the air. But he'll be more than likely to barter with you because he has all the stuff that you need. You can also upgrade your guns with whatever gun parts you find lying around. You can also pick up artillery shells and clear out debris, but these are limited because there's only a finite number of them in the game, so choose wisely. Remember those rats I mentioned earlier? You can stop them from filling up an area by just straight up chucking a grenade into holes where you can hear rat chatter. It's a smart system and another layer of resource management to the gameplay loop, because those are grenades that could be used to get rid of multiple enemies at a time as opposed to making sure you know how to do rats later. It's a nice balance. This all ends up making you intimately familiar with how the trenches are laid out, making them feel more like the Spencer Mansion of the original Resident Evil as opposed to these places of war. And that also means a lot of backtracking. Like, a lot of backtracking. But that's acceptable because you need to be smart with your pathing to avoid getting got. Because all it takes is one wrong turn to end up getting a trench club to the back of a skull. But if you aren't keen on managing resources up to and including saving, yes, you have a separate resource for making sure that you can save your game. You know, like the ink ribbons from Resident Evil 1. You can opt into having infinite saves and even checkpoints if that's more to your liking, and it's a dependent of difficulty choice as well. So you can choose your difficulty that you prefer and have these extra options, which is a nice thing to have. Conscript comes together to bring these different elements to create one of the most effective horror experiences of 2024, and probably the best horror game I've played since Resident Evil 7. It's a bleak, brutal look at how war dehumanizes us, and how despite our best attempts, humans are capable of being the greatest monsters of all. And while that is an incredibly depressing notion to think about, it makes for a fantastic horror game. So. If you're willing to deal with the existential dread that comes with the Great War, come give Conscript a chance. But remember, 
or as hell. And that will be it for this week's video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like it if you did and share it around as well. It helps the channel out. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend.